What's up guys, Phoenix here, and I'm back from this weekend's regional in Charlotte, North Carolina. It was hosted by Hobby Town USA, and it was their first regional in the area. They did a pretty good job for their first regional. The event could have been better, but it was a really nice, you know, location overall in terms of, you know, we were able to go outside and there was like a pond with, font with like fountains out, and it was just really nice and surreal and relaxing in between rounds, uh, being able to go outside and just be like sitting in front of a pond and, and having nice cool breezes and things right next to the event hall. So, all in all, really good weekend. I ended up coming in uh, 14th place, um, and I played uh, Dragoonity Rulers. I played the Ruler variant. I literally made the switch at like 8 p.m. the night before the event, um, before I started my drive up there to you know stay in the hotel room that we had across the street from the event. Um, and then I literally I made the decision to switch at like 8 p.m. and then I swat I switched everything over when we got to the hotel. Wrote out my deck list, play, drew some test hands, and put together my janky side deck. And decided, you know what? I'm just going to win because I'm better. Uh, <laughs> so, it's basically, this build is a pretty standard, you know, just build based off, you know, what Patrick Hoban had been running. I've been talking with Patrick a lot. I talked with Tyree Tinsley, who was also at the regional. I talked with him a little bit. Um, got some ideas for him on how to change it up and all that, but... All in all, I'm happy with how the deck performed. Um, there are certain things that I would change um, in hindsight, but I mean, who is what? Who doesn't have that? Um, but anyway, there's uh, eight, 17 monsters, the uh, three ducks, and I've run the one Zephyros. Uh, a lot of people do not run this card. In fact, I feel like I'm the only one that run this, runs this. Um, when I played Tyree, though, he, he liked what I was doing with it. Um, the only reason I was able to do as well as I did over the course of the day was having this throwback because game rounds one through three, I wasn't really in a proper mindset of how to use the dragons most efficiently and being able to just ravine Zephyros and you know, do all those plays and win the way that I know how is really what allowed me to just, you know, 2-0 my first three round matchups um, with relative ease. I mean, even the uh, fact that I had this straight up won me around simply because the guy didn't side for dragons. He sided for Dragoonities. He didn't side for the dragon aspect because I just opened Ravine Zephyros and won the game with that. I had dragons in my hand, but I didn't play them because I didn't want to give away information unless I needed to. And he didn't side his Iron Walls or anything. The most he saw was a Tempest, so he thought it was just Tempest Dragoonities. So having this in allows you to do things like that, and it lets you take advantage of people that don't really know what they're doing as much. Um, only two phalanxes. The deck has so much draw and search power that you really only need two. So, I mean, you end up banishing one off your Tempest or Blaster and then getting it back with Return when you set up those plays and things like that. Um, it's just really, you know, not been, it's not needed at three. Uh, same with the Missile Ten. You only need one because it's so heavily searchable and the deck has got so much draw power and it's bad in a lot of bad scenarios. Like, if you're already losing, you don't want to draw this card. Um, it just makes things a little bit more complicated. Um, only run nine dragons, three redox, three tempest, and the three blasters. And then I run the one red eyes, which I've also seen a lot of people cut, but running the Zephyros in here lets me run the red eyes as well. Um, if I go second, uh, in, you know, if I win game one, I'm going second, I'll generally set out the red eyes and the Zephyros because I want my dragon engine to be more, you know, beneficial and I need to make room for more side deck cards. So it just, and then they go in back in game three, whether or not I'm going first or second. At least the Zephyros does. Um, Red Eyes is usually depends on the matchup. But anyway, there's uh, 15 spells, three Dragon Ravine, two Terraforming. As as I've said, this deck has massive draw power. Uh, two cards of Consonants. You only have two Flanks, but they're so heavily you know searchable and, again, draw power. This deck has a ton of it. Um, that They're almost never dead, but there's a... Uh, a couple changes I'm going to make to the deck, like adding in a flambeau card and things like that, that'll make it better. Um, three Sacred Sword of Seven Stars. This card is amazing. This is the sole reason why I like this deck. The main reason I wanted to play it was simply because of the fact that the deck has Pot of Greed. Like, there's no reason for a deck to be able to abuse this card as much as this deck can. Um, any other deck with seven stars is a one for one, but this is, you know, a plus one. So, and being able to just give you extra cards in hand to fuel for Ravine and all that is very, very beneficial. Um, I ran the three upstart goblins. These are coming out. These are coming out, guaranteed. I don't like them in this. Um, 
I've said that before, but now I, tr I I just ran it because it was what I had on me. Like I didn't have enough cards on me physically to uh, to build the deck the way I wanted to, so I just went with the standard, you know, what I had. Um, and that'll be you'll be able to see that more with the side deck and all that, um, because the side deck could have been a lot better. Like I basically had no almost nothing sided for the mirror. And that's what ended up losing me round eight and nine because I went undefeated the first seven rounds. Then I lost round eight and nine to the mirror um, because I just didn't have enough resource to play with because I didn't have anything sided for it because I didn't have anything with me. Um, but anyway, other than that, uh, Upstart is coming out for just more you know good cards because this got me into so many awkward scenarios. Like I would have Ravine Zephyros in hand and I have like an Upstart. I'd have like a seven star sword and I'm trying to make the seven star sword live. I'm like, okay, cool. I've got nine dragons in my deck. I can draw into one of nine of them and make the seven star sword live and I'd upstart goblin into like the red eyes or something. Um, which is not bad, but it's forced a lot of weird scenarios. Um, especially like when I was going into like having to play into back row and things like that. It's just, it was, it was not nice. And there were, there was games where I, played an upstart and I was only able to hit for 84 and I had to struggle to get that last bit of damage in because it allowed my opponent to reestablish. It was just weird. Uh, and then for one, I was Book of Moon and the Gold Sark. Book of Moon is really good. It just lets you set up the Crimson Blader plays all day, um, which is what ultimately gets you a lot of your games. Um, and there's eight traps. The three recklesses, which I absolutely love. The upstarts are going to be coming out, but the recklesses are staying. They just give you so much advantage. Um, with the, all the draw power the deck has, even without the upstarts, you get into multiple recklesses. There are plenty of times when I didn't open any upstarts and I got into triple reckless, and it's just like, it just lets you unfair. Um, you have to be very smart with how you play them, though, because it is possible to lock yourself under reckless um, with, like, minimal resource, and it doesn't really help you. Um, two Vanity, because this card is absolutely wonderful, and it is unfair, and it just lets you win the game for no reason. Um, I won an entire game, I won a game against, um, against, what was it, uh, against Mermouse, because I just summoned Zephyros, because I had nothing else going for me in my hand, because I was locked under Reckless, and I just summoned Zephyros and attacked, and his hand was like, Megalo gunned lead, and he tries to ditch for Megalo, with the gunned in the lead, and I've emptiness him, so now his hand is only the Megalo, and I just poked him for like four turns with the Zephyros, while he couldn't draw a pike or anything, and his lind was you know, useless because the emptiness. It was pretty good. Um, and then the last three traps are one of Bottomless Warning and Return. Return is just an unfair card in general. Um, I flipped this card in time twice on the last turn in time, and it just makes me feel really dirty. Like, I just baited out my opponent's back rows with, uh, with a Draco Sack on the last turn in time. And then um, once, I, once I whittled down all the threats, I'm just like, return for game. It's just unnecessary <laughs> for a deck to be able to do that. Um, extra deck is also... It's it it's kind of weird, but I like it. I'm going to keep it the way it is. Uh, Crim one Crimson Blader, a lot of people are running two. I don't see the need because I don't like YOLO into it as much, but um, I might put a second one in depending on if I cut anything. Um, that'd be the first thing I cut in. Um, one Scrap Dragon, the Colossal Fighter, and two Stardust Dragons. For the Dragoonity side, the Gators, because the Zephyros is such a, you know, live ballot option. Um, three Vajrayanas you need because you have to support opening Ravine Zephyros and then still having a follow-up play with one Vajrayana, because if you open Ravine Zephyros and you're only running two Vajrayanas like the normal builds, you are going to blow through the two you have right then and there, and you're not going to be able to make a follow-up play with Ducks on the next turn if you need to. So, it pretty much clogs the extra deck that way running the Zephyros, but other than that, it's worth it. Um, being able to just win better with the Dragoonity side if you don't draw any dragons is also nice. Um, for the Exceed part, just one Draco Sack, one Big Eye, and Gaia Charger for the rank 7s, and then Bouncer, Patalmy, and Tom for the rank 6s for the Dragoonity side and the Dragon side. And this kind of you know crosses over. But other than that, uh, the extra deck I liked. I liked it because I, I don't. I'm one of those people that I just, I like to win with the Dragoonity side, and I just use the dragons as beaters um, for the majority of the day, just to, like, bait out back row, and I never really made Big Eye and uh, Draco Sack, like, just right away. Um, I did make it once. Uh, the only times I made Big Eye and Draco Sack were when I was actually, you know, trying to bait things out better 
or I was having to like win the game. Like I played against Blue Eyes Prophecy, and I made the big eye to take. And we were going about to go into time, and I used the big eye to take his blue eyes, and you know crashed it in this you know world and things like that. Um, no, not crashed it, ran it over. But overall, uh, side deck. It was very, you know, janky, put together last minute. It was basically just a leftover side deck from the Tempest Dragonities, and then I put in just like a couple, I swapped a few uh, cards out of it. Um, two Legionnaires, because, I mean, apparently no one in the world that I talked to had Fencing Fire Ferrets, just to, that they could get rid of. So I just put the Legionnaires. Um, two Veilers, and uh, I didn't have my Max C's with me. So I wasn't able to side those, and it pissed me off because I needed them against the mirrors around uh, eight and nine. Um, but Vela worked well. Two MST, uh, two Xyz Encore, two Decree, two Needle Ceiling for the uh, Infernity matchup and things like that. And then the Eradicator, and then a Light Imprisoning Mirror. And for some reason, I decided to keep a Soul Drain in my side deck. I mean, it won me my match against Mermails because I had enough of a Dragoonity engine, you know, established to where the Soul Drain was just, you know, it lets me win right now on spot. But overall, I just, I, I wondered why I sided this because I thought about it after I registered my deck list and after I looked through my side deck round one, I was like, wait a second, I'm playing Dragons. Why is this in my side deck? <laughs> um, if, if I had my Maxis with me, these two cards would have definitely been um, Maxis. I did play against two Constellar matchups, and uh, I sided this in both times, but didn't draw it, and I just won anyway. Uh, it's just, it just seems a little ex excess. <clears throat> but, anyway, that's the uh, deck list for you guys. Um, I'm going to do a completely different video talking about my uh, tournament experience and doing a regional report, because it's going to be fairly long, because uh, I, I like going into detail about this stuff. Um, so, as always, guys, comment, rate, subscribe. Clicking that if you have not, I'd greatly appreciate it. It helps me make money. Um, there's no reason to lie about that. I'm going to change this deck up a bit, and um, after I do a little bit of testing with it, I will uh, I will let you guys know after talking with Tyree Tinsley. He likes my Zephyros idea because I was doing some cool shit with it game one when we played. Um, and uh, I, he has some ideas that I liked, and I'm going to try and combine those. Um, but other than that, uh, I guess just... Look out for the regional report video. As always, guys, take care.